So I'm back home. I am back home. I could see in her eyes, she didn't get it. <laughs> and they were home in our place. And when the young people come to London, they will be home as well. We are home everywhere. Where you will find people of the same family. So, let me start. I have to greet for my wife. Greetings for my wife. That's a, that's a tradition. I cannot say she would like to be here because she doesn't want to be here. Huh? Normally people say, I like, my wife would like to be here. Uh -huh. In my case, it's not the case. If you go to the next one, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. It's not because of you, it's because of the long trip. So, she sends greetings to you from distance. I mean, they, they brought greetings from her when they came back. Okay, let's go to work. Amen? We're here to work. God is at work. Even Jesus said, My Father works, I work. Let's all work. Because the earth belongs to him. But Adam gave it away. Bad mistake. But he did. That's history. That is history. We cannot undo that. But God saying the last Adam, Jesus, his own son, to bring back mankind to himself. Not to heaven, but to himself. He is heaven, by the way. If you meet him, you meet heaven. Amen? So heaven is, is not a geographical location. I mean, we don't know. Because none of us have been there. So we don't know what heaven is about. Like, Bible gives some impressions. But it's just impressions. I'm not sure God wants to tell us what it is. Otherwise, we will all leave earth immediately to go to heaven. He does not want that to happen. Because there is a lot to do on earth. Because God's plan is not only about us. That's why it's wrong when people say God came, Jesus came to save us. That's wrong. That's wrong. Sounds right. It's true he came to save, but not just to save me, because now I'm saved. What then? He, he came to take back the earth to himself. 
газар дэлхийг өөртөө буцааж авах гэж ирсэн. Амин. Амин. In order to do that, he needs people. Түүнд хүмүүс хэрэгтэй байсан. To do it on his behalf. Түүний нэрийн өмнөөс энэ ажлыг үүсгэх хүмүүс. But the only people who can do that on his behalf. Түүний нэрийн өмнөөс энэ ажлыг үүсгэх чадвар тэр цорынгаад хүмүүс хийгээд гэхээр who are like his son. Хүүтэй бүхний хүүтэй адилхан тэр хүмүүс л чадна. Nobody else can do that. Өөр хэн ч энэ ажлыг хийж чадахгүй. No politician. Ямар ч улс төрч economist or scientist or nobody can do that. Only the son of God. Only the son of God. That's why the people God can use are people who are like him. Тийм учраас бурхны ашиглах хүмүүс юу вэ гэхээр хүүтэл ажилла хүмүүсийг бурхан ашиглаж чадна. So God's work is not in the nations. Тэгэхээр бурхны ажил нь үндэснүүд онд биш. God's main work is on us. Тийм учраас бурхны гол ажил нь бид нар дээр явагдаж байгаа юм байна. We must take responsibility. Тэгэхээр бид нар хариуцлагыг хүлээх хэрэгтэй. We must grow up. Бид нар өсөх хэрэгтэй. We must become adults. Насан хүрэх хэрэгтэй. Not children anymore. Дахиад хүүхэд байха бол sons and daughters, yes, but adults sons and daughters. Хүүхэд дахтууд нь болно. Хүүхэд дахтууд нь болно. Тэгэхдээ ямар байх хэрэгтэй насан төрсөн. That's why Jesus said or yeah, Jesus said in John 17. Тийм учраас Есүс Йоанн 17-р хэлсэн. He said in the same way I was sent, I sent you. Би илгээгцэн шигээ та нарыг илгээж байна гэж. God could change the world anytime at any time. God could change the world, change the nation anytime. Бохон хүссэн цагта үндэсний зүгээр өөрчлөлт чи асуудал. Amen. He can just come down and you know things will happen. Тэгэл шууд өөрчлөлт болно. There have been revivals. Сэргэлтүүд болж исэн. In in the history in world history. Хэн түгэнд олон сэргэлтүүд болж. During these revivals. Тэгэл сэргэлтүүд үеэр God really came down. Бохон хүр өөр өнхөр бууж ирсэн. Heard about the Welsh revival? The Welsh revival. Over hundred thousand people got saved in three months. Three months. People walked down the streets. Suddenly, God revealed Himself to them. No pastor, no message, no internet, no live stream. God was live streamed directly from heaven. And people walking on the pavements. Met God. They went on their knees. They ask for forgiveness for their sins. Then they have they have to find a church. But when they came to church, they had already been saved. On the pavement in the streets. This is what can happen when God really comes down. But that's not God's ultimate plan. God wants to work through people. That's why we're here. For us to be changed into the likeness of His Son. But the problem is that most Christians they just want to go to heaven. They don't want to change. They just want to be the same and be blessed and God has to come and kiss them good night and good morning and Тэгээ тэдэр зүгээр амралтаал тэгээл одоо бурханд өнсүүлээ цай нуу баяртай өсөө нэг мэдгээл бурхан эрхлүүлээ байж байгаа сэр гэж хүсдэг. We belong to a different category of people. Харин бид нар бол хүмүүсийн өөр категори тамаар тавьдаг. Бидний хамгийн одоо гал халуун хүсэж үү гэж into the likeness of the son of God. Бурхны хүүтэй адил болж өөрчлөгдөх. Энэ бол хамгийн Because when that happens, successively, little by little, then we will do the same works he did. That's why we have a seminar like this. Time when God works in our lives. 
Энэ бол бурхны бид бидний амьдралд ажилдэх цагаан зовоо. Бидний дотор хөрөнгө That's why he works today. To prepare us for tomorrow. As Pastor Baggy said in the beginning of the meeting. That's why we have meetings. It's not to have a good time and good coffee and good cakes and good fellowship. Intensive moments. Where you and I will present ourselves to him. Together. And with one heart. And one mind. We say to him. Father. Go ahead. Shake me. Into the likeness of your son. Because when I change, my life can bring change everywhere. Amen? So that's why we get together. Alright, in these sessions, I will speak from the letters of Peter. So in your If you, in your free time, if you have free time, you read the two letters. They are not, they are not many letters, and they are short letters. But the last couple of months, I have discovered certain things, and and I, I realized that I had underestimated Peter's letters. We human beings, we can be strange people. Even I, like you, like me, like anybody else, we have our thoughts and we have our considerations and we have our impressions. So they began to read these two letters again. I said to myself, I asked myself, why did I, didn't I read them more before? And maybe it's because Paul wrote more letters. Because he wrote more letters. I don't remember, 10. Or oh, eleven. Oh, oh, Peter only two. Peter so maybe we think Peter oh, the letters of Paul are more important. Could be one reason. I told you we we are strange. Right? <laughs> Another reason could be they're so short. <laughs> You read them in 20 minutes. Let's, let's go back to Paul because that's, 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 that's deep stuff. Yeah. A third reason could, could be that Paul can be the hero of Christians because his conversion was phenomenal. The man was a murderer. He was attacking the church, killing Christians. He took them to court in the dozens, maybe in the hundreds. And the more, the more were killed and the more were persecuted, the more were tortured, the, the, more, were persecuted, the more were tortured, the better. And then one day on the road to Damascus, God showed up, pushed him down the horse or whatever it was, and God said, Jesus said to him, Saul, Saul, 
Saulas Saulas. Why are you persecuting me? Yad nama kafchat on this. It was a revolution in his life. Tuni ender dinge jilchli pusti. From that hour on. Tir tagas hash. Paul became a new person. Paul shod chinko masa. So we think. Whoa, that's We better read his letters. But Peter. Harry Peter. Oh, Peter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Peter, my goodness. What on earth are you doing? You were one of the first one he called. You are such a privileged man. You were on the mountain of transfiguration. You heard the voice of the Father speak. You saw Elijah in Moses. Peter, what are you? Why are you missing up all the time? Paul, look at Paul. Peter. He made Jesus once. And his whole life will turn around 180 degrees. He was so changed that the Christians were fear, afraid of him. When he entered the room from the back door, people looked, whoa. We better pray now. <laughs> the murderer is in the house. <laughs> some, people, some people say he's changed. Yeah, but how much change is he? You know? But Peter, he had his ups and downs non-stop ups and downs. One minute he said, Jesus, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus thought, finally, finally, next minute, Jesus, don't go to the cross. That's not okay. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Peter, what are you doing? You are so privileged. You have been, you have been trained and sharpened and instructed from the very beginning. So we prefer Paul. You know, Christians prefer Paul. Christian power thing if you did just boom revolution that changed. But the people who are maybe walking slow and ups and then they're down, then they're more down, then they're even more down, <laughs> then, they're, then they're up again. Oh, oh, oh. God help us. <laughs> That's why maybe we think. Oh, There's two small letters of Peter, you know. Maybe he was, he, maybe he was in a good mood. When he wrote the two letters, maybe he had a depression after that. That's why no more letters from Peter. <laughs> Peter was a key man in the kingdom. Peter was a key man in the kingdom. He was a key man in the kingdom. So I regret him. I have not paid more attention to these two small letters. Another way we think, well, sometimes I did the same. When we go to Nahum or Micah or Obadiah. We call them the small prophets. Oh, it's one of the small prophets. What do you mean by small? <laughs> <laughs> the book is small. But who knows? Maybe, in God's eyes, they are greater than Isaiah. That's our human measuring units. Oh, that person in the church, whoa, they are so great. And that person, ah, struggling all the time. Maybe 
Don't bother, shut up and walk. <laughs> Because life can be difficult from time to time. <laughs> But Jesus never resigned when he came to Peter. Never. <laughs> he knew <laughs> Peter was a bit difficult. <laughs> But he knew also <laughs> that Jesus would do well. At the Pentecost, Peter will become the key man. And the years after that, he was still a key man. Even after the resurrection, Peter decided, I'm out. And you think, what do you need? Five resurrections? <laughs> No. Jesus stood up again. Death could not hold him back. He just rose up. Amen. And the veil in the temple just broke from up to down. Then people resurrected. There was darkness in the whole land. Earth was shaken. Even Pilate said, this man was the son of God. But Peter, who had been there from the very beginning, seen all the miracles, he saw Lazarus come out of the grave. Peter resigned. Amen? Verse 7. Peter is a key man in the kingdom. So don't resign. Let God work. Don't condemn yourself if you make a mistake. Ask for forgiveness. Tell the Father, Father, continue to work on me. I want to become a vessel to your glory. I want to become an agent of change in my secular environment. Use my life, use my words. Use me. Let me shine, let me radiate. Let me become the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And if there is some darkness in me, God will move it. As soon as possible. Because I don't want to be both light and darkness. There is nothing called light, light and darkness. I studied physics, I studied light. There is nothing called light and darkness at the same time. And Jesus said, if the soul loses its power, it's good for nothing. So that's the life we want to live. That's his life. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Amen. Amen. So Peter was a good man. And in these days, I will show you certain things from his two small letters, which will show us that these letters are not small letters, they are great letters. They are important letters, they are relevant letters for us. In 2019, maybe for the whole next decade, both in Mongolia, Denmark, wherever we live, these letters are extremely important. Okay? So, I hope that after this week, after these days, you will appreciate these letters in a new way, fresh one. When you think about Peter, you will not think about the get behind me Satan <laughs> Because who knows? Maybe God had thought that about us. Maybe he didn't say it the way he said it to Peter. Because maybe if he did that, 
we had risen. Peter Short Portugal. Peter did not resign. And Peter Portugal. He could take that correction. Peter, Jesus is his hatogi Peter. We have to be good at being corrected by God. Peter Bochnar Zasak Tahta and Kirsten. We have to become very teachable. Peter Bolson Tasta. Alright, so when you think about Peter, you will not think about get behind me, Satan, or you will not think about his betrayal three times. Peter and the Hobart of the Ancient, where Jesus Satan gets his sister with the Tataris, or all times this or sister with the two people. How many times have I betrayed him? Be a load of here or so by Tunis or Sibi. Maybe thirty thousand times. But thank God nobody wrote about it in the book. But poor Peter, they heard it and they wrote it down. Please delete it, delete it. Because Peter can become an example for us. Peter, Peter, so remember the strong Peter. Remember Peter Pentecost. Remember Peter, Peter in the Peter. house of Cornelius. Cornelius while he spoke, God came down. People were saved. Maybe dozens of people. And the kingdom of God penetrated the military world. Yeah, God entered the army. The Roman army. And saved people. God will enter many worlds in the coming years. Even the, arm, even the army world. God loves everybody. So let's go to First Peter. And tonight that we just introduced a little bit. So we know the frame of the letters. So, first Peter chapter first Peter chapter one. From verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in each Peter. To those who are elect exiles of the dispersion. Jesus Christ in each Peter B. In Pontus, in Galatia, in Cappadocia, in Asia, in Bithynia. Pont, Galat, Cappadoc, Ads, Bottom, Bithun, of their person, also Shishnak, Idlet. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father. In the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with His blood. Jesus Christ, the door of the Bethel, for the Bethel, to the Bethel, to the Bethel, may grace, peace be multiplied to you. Now, these two verses set the scene. We draw the frame, the context. And if you pay attention to what he wrote, you will understand that something very strong is on the way. Because Peter said, I am an apostle, which means I am a representative of God. In you we get be all but he to do the I'm not the one once. Be people is need to be sure. I have progressed, I have changed. Be all shifts, be satisfied. I am a representative of heaven. Be more sin to do the channel. Then he mentioned the Father. Then he mentioned the Holy Spirit. Then he mentioned the Son. Then he mentioned them. All the people he wrote these two letters for. Alright? That's the that's the congregation we have there. Not physically in one place. 
би махах байдгийг хот нэг газар цуглаа spiritually гэхдээ сүнслэг сүнслэг байдал дотор god the father god the son god the spirit are present сүнслэг одоо сүнсний ертөнц дотор хин байсан байхаар эцэг байсан ариун сүнс байсан хүү байсан хөдөлөөлөгч байсан ба peter is there peter тэнд байсан representative of god бурхны төлөөлөгч болоо on earth газар дэлхийд ирэх төлөөлөгч болсон trained by god called by god бурхнаар дуудагдсан бурхнаар сургалт by god бурхнаар хэлбэржүүлэгч corrected by god түүнээр засагдсан sometime in a mild way sometime in a strong way заримда зөөлөн арга замаар заримда хатуу замаар but here his book his confidence нэгэн байсан бөгөөд тэр одоо энэ зөргтэй өөртөө итгэлтэй нэгэн болж гарч that's the way we should live бид нар яг ингэж амьдрах хэвээр with confidence итгэлтэй I am a man of God. I am a woman of God. Хүн би бол бурхны эмхтэй. He called me. Тэр намаар дуудсан. I am walking with him. Би түүнтэй хаа дахиж байгаа. I'm just going to church. I'm walking with the God of the church. Би зөвхөн сүмд явдаг хүн биш. Би сүм сүмийн бурхад I am hearing his voice. Би түүний дуу хаалаг сонсдог. I do my very best to align constantly to everything he says. Би түүнийг хэлсэн бүхэнтэй нөө өөригөө одоо нийцүүлэхийн тулд би тасралгүй хэч Би өсөж байна, би төлөвшөж байна. My life is progressing. Миний амьдрал одоо цайжирч дэлгэж байна. Sometimes fast, sometimes slow, but I am progressing. Хурдан заримдаа удаан ч гэсэн ямар ч би хөвчөж байна. So I am confident. Тийм учраас би итгэлтэй. Are we? I'm not nobody, I'm not nothing. I am somebody because he made me somebody. Би хин нэг хин ч биш юу ч биш нэгэн биш харин бурхан намаа бүтээж байгаа учраас би түүн би хин нэг юм аа гэж тэлтэй. We need that boldness. Би тэр ин зөрг хэрэгтэй. God can give us that position so we can be bold in the spirit. Бурхан бид нарт ин байр суурийг өгөхөд бид нар сүнс дотор зөргтэй болно. That's why the whole church prayed for the leaders. Тийм учраас бүгс сүн өдөртөш нар тандаж хийсэн байна. We have just been under great pressure. Тэд тэр маш их дарамтанд орсон. Don't talk. Ярьж болохгүй. Don't do miracles. Гайхамшгүй тэгэхээр. Don't speak about resurrection. Дахин амьтдаа талаар ярьж болохгүй гэж. You know? When they came out the church prayed for them and they said God give them boldness. Тэгээд тэд нар харчлаас гарч ирэхэд нөгөө тэд нар зарьдсан байгаа. Бурхан миний энэ хүмүүс зоригийг өгөөч гэж. We move all fears from their lives. Тэдний амьдралаас айцыг зайлуулах чинь. We move all rejection. Одоо голдлыг зайлуулах чинь. Or remove all condemnation or self condemnation. Бүх буруутгалыг зайлуулах чи өөрийгөө буруутгаад байгаа байдлыг зайлуулах. Remove intimidation. Тэр ичүүртэй байдлыг зайлуулах. Keep our forwardness bold. Та бидний бидний өдөртөгчнийг зоригтой байлгах чи гэж хүмүүс Everybody is you they were bold. Тэр өдөртөгчнөр зоригтой гэдгийг бүгд мэдчих. Even the Pharisees is new they were bold. Фарисейчүүд мэдчих. That's why they were wondering why are they so bold? Тэр учраас тэр гайхч ис яага тэд нэр юм зоригтой. They thought now they have been walking with Jesus. Тэр тэд нэр Есүс тэхэн балхаж байсан юм байна гэдгийг олж чанж байна юм. Тэр түүгээр өөрчлөгдсөн. So Peter is very confident. Тэр Петр маш итгэлтэй байгаа. It's not the same as arrogance. Энэ бол ихэрхэл биш шүү. It's not pride. God will resist the proud. Бурхан гол бартам нэгний хүртүүлэгт. The God gives us confidence in him. Харин тэр өөрийнхөө дотор бид нарт бат итгэлийг өгдөг юм аа. Amen. That's important. Энэ маш чухал. I am confident I I know who am I. Би өөртөө итгэлтэй би хин гэдэг юм. I also know my weaknesses. Би өөрийнхөө сул талуудыг мэдэх. I know my limitations. Би өөрийнхөө хязгаарыг мэдэх. I know what has still to be improved in my life. Миний амьдрал цаашрах хэрэгтэй зүйлс байгаа гэдэг би мэдэх. But I am where I am. Гэхдээ би одоо энэ байх. And I pursue the things I need. Тэгэл би надад хэрэгтэй байгаа тэр зүйлс юм шиг гэж. Түүний араас явж байна. Бурхан надад туслах. So Peter mainly says in two verses The Father is there, the Son is there, the Spirit is there, I am there too. Peter энэ хоёр ихтэй хэлж байна. Эцэг энд байна, хүү энд байна, ариун сүнс энд байна, би бас энд байна. And we want to talk with you. Тэгээд бид таанарлуу ярих хэрэгтэй. Because there are certain issues we want to address. Яа тэгэхээр бид нэ одоо хандах хэрэгтэй гэж асуудал үү? As you understand this is not a small letter. Тийм учраас миний ойлгох сончлын энэ бол зүгээр жижигхэн захирал. It's a big letter. Маш том захирал. It cannot be bigger. 
What is bigger than God is in the place, you know? The Father is there, the Son is there, the Spirit is there, God's, God's representative is there. Oh my goodness. It's much bigger than when Trump meets Putin or whoever it is. So these letters are great letters. Heaven is there, Peter is there. And Peter says, we have something to tell you. In these two letters. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. If we go to the second letter now. Chapter 3. Listen to what he wrote. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you, beloved. So Peter is not writing letters like we write you know, on Facebook. Peter says, I already wrote one. Peter And now I'm actually writing number two. So we can hear something is going on in Peter's heart. This is now my second letter. Meaning, I hope you read the first one. And I hope you have taken the message in the first one seriously because now I'm writing the second one. That's the, that's the way I think sometimes Sunday morning. This is the second Sunday I'm speaking to you about this issue. I hope you remember what I said last Sunday. Because this is now the second Sunday. Can you hear that? Can you hear Peter's desire? Can you hear how important he feels his words are. So this is now the second letter that I am writing to you, beloved. In both of them, I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder. That you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandments of the Lord and Savior through your apostles. Through your apostles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So Peter said, I wrote one letter. Peter is a small one. I wrote one. Now I write a second letter. And what I want with these two small letters is to remind you of what the holy prophets have already said for centuries. Number two, what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and Savior has said as well. And what your apostles have said. So Peter is not writing two sweet letters. One day when he was inspired. He saw a beautiful sunset. Oh, how great are you. I will write a letter to these Christians. Because God is so wonderful. No, no. Peter is thinking like this. We've had holy prophets speaking to us for centuries. About God's plans for the nations. Then Jesus came himself and spoke about the same. 
And then his apostles spoke about it. And now, I am just adding two small letters to all that. To remind you of all that. All that is, is huge. My two small letters are just to remind you of that. Uh, are you there? So this is the way Peter is thinking as he wrote the letters. Then he continues. Verse 3. Knowing this first of all. So Peter was aware of certain things, certain issues that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing following their own sinful desires. So, this is the way Peter is thinking as he sat at his desk Writing these two small letters. The holy prophets have been spoken for centuries. Jesus came and spoke. The apostles came and spoke. And now I want to remind you of all that. Because in the last days, see, there will be some people who are mocking this. And because of their because of their mocking or their disrespect for all that, I want to, I want to underline all that again. Because what is going to be said or written? Might draw some of you away from the trap, from the, from destiny. You know, Peter was the right man to write that. Peter only because several times he was pulled away from the world, from the world. Paul was saved and jumped in. Peter walked. And then certain things happened. And then other things happened. And then in the courtyard of the of the high priest, he denied Jesus three times. So, so fear drew him away. But then he came back. Then Jesus died. Then fear came upon them. And they hid themselves behind closed doors and windows. Then he said, I will go back fishing. I cannot stand this. So many thoughts, many, many feelings, many issues have attempted to take him away. That's why he's the right man to write. And say, be careful because I can hear voices. That will be people who will try to take you away from destiny. Divert you. Don't do that. That's why I remind you that this is so so big, so huge. Don't be taken away. Watch yourself. Because this is not only me talking. The prophets have been speaking for centuries. Jesus came and spoke. The apostle came and spoke. At the end of the chapter, he even said, Paul also is writing letters. Even his letters are difficult to understand. But Paul is also addressing the issue. 
So be careful. Wash your lives. There is an enemy out there. If he cannot kill you, he will try to divert you. Are you with me? That's why he wanted to do this. That's why he, that's what the Bible says, he wrote to the people who were exiles in the dispersion. They were dispersed. Some went there, some went there, maybe because of the persecution. Some went to that place, some went to that place. Then Peter knew. They have to be careful now. Because if they don't handle that situation well, they might be diverted. Are you with me? Okay? So dispersion can bring diversion. And diversion can produce decline. Peter knew that. Because from time to time, he was diverted. Not for another, not for another country, but to other thoughts. That's why I said to Jesus, Jesus, you must be crazy. If you die, everything is gone. Jesus, Jesus said to him, you think like the main things, not like the things. So Jesus basically said, Peter, you have already diverted in your Mind. So there are many types of diversion. Can be geographical. You have church members in Korea. You have church members in China. You have church members in Czech Republic. You have church members in France, Switzerland. Maybe you have more church members than you think. Maybe there are secret church members. I mean, Jesus had. Nicodemus was one. Yeah. For years we hear nothing about him. But when Jesus hung on the cross, Nicodemus was one. So I believe he had been there all the time. So don't judge one another. Make sure you walk well. Why did he show up at the last minute? Yeah, but at the cross, Nicodemus was there, Peter was not. <laughs> what about Joseph of Arimathea? He was there too. He had been a believer all the time. We don't need people who show up. We need people who walk the walk. Amen. Walk with him. Not only, not necessarily behind the pulpit in your everyday life. Some, some people can be strong when they have a microphone. But only when they have a microphone. <laughs> so dispersion can be it can be geographical. We have sons and daughters in different countries. You have Avindra from Sri Lanka, he's my son. There's another country on the other side of the globe. But you can be separated geographically and connected in heart. Amen. And you can be in the meeting and disconnected from the house. 
That's why we don't judge by appearance. The, the walk will show who people are. So Peter here is concerned about them. Because he knew if they are not careful when they are dispersed, dispersion can produce diversion. Diversion can produce disconnection. Disconnection produces decline. Sometimes it's interesting to see people who leave the church for a while and come back. Maybe half a year. If they have not kept connected, things have declined inside of them. And it can happen to all of us, it can happen to me. <laughs> my spiritual father lives in Malaysia. In those, I am dispersed from <laughs> that house. <laughs> I, I am in, in exile, I'm in Denmark. <laughs> I keep myself connected. In spirit and in heart. Because if I don't keep that way, Dispersion can produce diversion, diversion can produce disconnection and decline. I don't have to go to Malaysia every week. I know people who are there three times a year. But their lives are declining anyway. I am there twice a year. But I keep myself sharp and fresh. And Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you have to go to church twice a year. <laughs> I'm saying that's my situation. It's not yours. Okay. So it can be geographical dispersion. That's why when our young people move to another city, to go to another university, I have the same concern as Peter. Because dispersion can produce diversion. Then disconnection. Then Pastor, I will come back. I will come back. It's more difficult than you think. Because things have declined. It's not easy to take it back. At FGC two years ago. At FGC two years ago. There was a guest speaker. There was a woman. And um, and she had a work two workshops. About the influence of Music. Music can have a good influence, music can have a bad influence. I love music. Not only Christian music. Sometimes Christian music is the worst. <laughs> and untalented. And so I'm not talking about Christian versus non Christian. But certain music carries more than music, it carries a culture which can divert us. I remember when I, was, when I went to high school, I, I liked uh, very much a singer, a singer, singer. Uh, Leonard Cohn. Leonard Cohn is a Canadian Jew. Canadian Jew. Whoa, when I listened to him, whoa, beautiful music. The lyrics were like poems. I loved it. Listen to him every day. Oh, but then I feel like it's 
strange feeling. I was not very alive as a Christian at that time. Every time I listen to him, I become sad. For no reason. Because he sang in a sad way. And his sadness became, became much sadness. That's influence. And later God said to me, get rid of all the albums. Because I don't want you to become sad for no reason. Let him be sad for his reason. But just be joyful for your reason. So I had to take a long break for years, not listening to him at all. Now I can listen to him. And his sadness stays in the album. And my joy, my joy stays here. I'm not a, do you understand what I'm saying? So this woman had been very much in, in, um, uh, I don't remember that. I think it was reggae music. Mm -hmm. Reggae music carries a very strong culture. She was a small girl, she was 13 or 14. And she was a good singer. And she was a good dancer. And she went to church because her family were Christians. But then, because she listened to that music, she began to clothe the same way as the people using that music. And then she became better and better in singing and so on. And I think even she was a teenager, she became a professional DJ. In reggae clubs. She was phenomenal. I'm not sure it was reggae. Something else where there is special type of music. Then she explained how little by little because she was criticized in church because of her earrings or clothes or colors. Little by little she felt like she was a foreigner in the church. Then little by little people mistreated her People criticized her. People were judgmental. And she left the church. The point was, the point of her message was, don't do that. Because the way back to church is very difficult. It took her weeks to leave the church, it took her years to come back to church. And she just sat, sat on the chair at the FGC and she spoke and everyb� was totally silent. And she said to them, whatever your clothes, whatever your earrings or nose rings or whatever it is, don't leave the house. If people criticize you, let them criticize you. Walk with God. Are you with me? Because the way back is more difficult than you think. Uh -huh. Are you listening to me? Because as you leave, that diversion comes, disconnection comes, then decline comes. Mm -hmm. I, I did the same. I left my father's church for four years, three or four years. The way back was difficult. I didn't go back to his church. I went back to another church. Because it was too difficult for me. So I have to watch this disconnection, this deviation. That's the main reason why Peter is writing this. Because he knew 
яагаад гэхээр тэр мэдж байгаа байхгүй юу? How is it it is? Энэ ямар амрах юм бэ гэдэг. Ямар амрах юм гэж тийм юм. Can you believe? Can you believe he walked shoulder to shoulder with Jesus? He saw no god. Бурхны хүү Есүстэй мөр зэрэгцээд ачлах чийсэн штэ. He could touch him, he could hug him. Түүнд хүрч ийсэн, түүнийг тэвэрч ийсэн. He could have a walk with him. Түүнтэй ачлах чийсэн, түүнээс асууж байсан. He could share meal with him. Түүнтэй хамт хоолж байсан. He took, he could talk with him the whole night. Бүр шүнжингөө түүнтэй ярьдаг. Бурхны хүүтэй хүссэн үедээ харилцах боломжтой байсан. Many times. Гэтэ олон удаа тэгдэг. In his mind, in his emotions, in his fears and all kinds of stuff, pull him away. If it was that easy for him, how much more? I have to watch myself. Because I cannot see him the way I see Mark. I cannot, you know, discuss things the same way as if he was here in flesh and blood. Би Есүстэй нөх хүнтэй ярьж байгаа юм шиг юмс ярьж чадахгүй. I have to walk with him. Би түүнтэй хамт алхах. Talk with him all the time. Түүнтэй үргэлж ярих хэрэгтэй. I have to be in the house. Би өргөө дотор байх. Walk with the house all the time. Өргөө дотор байх хэрэгтэй. Even there might be issues and maybe a little bit of criticism and шүүмжлэл янз бүрийн асуудал байсан ч гэсэн. I will me. Та ойлгосноо тест. Maybe a young man who was in with us in Denmark from he's from Australia. Австралия зэрэг Дэн Дайн гэсэн нэг залуу хүн. Мэрэгчлийн хөвчилж. I mean he lives the life of a professional musician. Тэгэл мэрэгчлийн хөвчилжний амьд. He plays every night. Шүн олон тоглолтод in music clubs. Клубуд тоглолт. Tattoos and rings. Тэгэл нөгөө нэг шинээс He's an amazing believer. Гэтэ тэр үнэхээр гайхалтай гэж байсан. But in the church where he goes. Тэгэл сүмрэн очихтой байх хэцүү. Are we mean? Walk with God. This is Peter's concern when he the two ladies. Хоёр цагтлыг бичгтэй Петрийн одоо санаа зөвлөж байсан хэсэг. I want us to be on the same page. За бид нар одоо нэг ойлголтсон. This is not a Bible study. Oh, let's let's read Peter's letters. Тэгээ энэ Библийн Библи судлал биш шүү. Библийн тал бас хэвчээ. We have to understand what was in his mind. Тийм Библийн судлал биш. Түүний дотор юу байсан юм бид нар ойлголтсон. What God had in his mind when he said to Peter, Peter write his letters to them. Бурхан Петрт энийг бичгэж хэлэхдээ бурхан юу бодож ирсэн бид нар. Same way God said to John, John write letters to seven churches. Бурхан Яван хэлдэжтэй 7 сүмд бичээ гэж хэлдэж. Яг тэр нь шиг Петрт хэлж бичсэн. Because there are good things in the churches. Яад тэр сүм сайн зүйлс байдаг. Bad things in this church. Бас муу зүйлс байдаг. And to one of them he even said. Тэр 7 сүмийн нэгэнд бүр бурхан хэлж. They don't change that. Энийг өөрчлөх бол I will take the candlestick away from them. Би таамраас Таны суурийг авна. So God was concerned about the churches. Тэгэхээр бурхан тэр сүмүүдийн талаар бодож байна. John, John, write to. Яахан, яахан бич ингэж бичсэн. Here God said to Peter, Peter, write to them. Энд бурхан Петр хэлсэн, тэдний тоглож бичээ. They are dispersed. Я тэр тэд нар тархсан байх. Dispersion can bring deviation. Тархалтан гажуудлыг авчихна. Bring disconnection. Тэгээд холбоо сулрах. Bring decline. Тэгээд уул дээр. And if the church declines. Сүм уултанд орох юм бол. If the church declines. Сүм уултанд орч ихлэл. The nation declines. Үндэстэн уултанд орох. That's the way. That's the way it is. If the church declines. Сүм уулх юм бол. The nation will decline. Үндэстэн уултанд орох. Because the church is God ultimate instrument. Яагаад гэхээр сүм өөрөө дэлхийн ертөнцөд нөлөөлөх бурхны зэгсэг. If your life declines. Таны амьдрал уралтанд орох юм. The people God gives you will decline as well. Бурхны танд харилцуулж өгсөн хүмүүс бас уралтанд орох. If my life declines. Миний амьдрал нурж ирсэн. Many people's lives. Энэ маш олон хүний амьдрал нөлөөлнө. It's not a pressure. Энэ дарамт биш шүү. Because God gives me the resources. Бурхан надад их сурвалжуудыг өгсөн. I have to read Peter's Энэ дарамт биш. Гэхдээ би Петрийн цагтлыг одоо унших хэрэгтэй. Аа вэ? Хайлцсан тийм. The church this church is dispersed. 
Not only to Korea, China, and so on. But during the week, from Sunday to Sunday, you are here, you are there, you are there, you are there, I am there, you are there, this guy is somewhere, Jesus is somewhere else. I mean, we are dispersed. If we don't walk well, we have to restart the whole thing in Sunday. Because we have deviated through the week. And then we have to bring all that That's why Peter said it's important. It must not happen. Even some of you might be working somewhere else for two months, let's say. Maybe your boss sends you to Dubai to work two months. That dispersion. In But it should not be diversion and decline. In still be connected in your heart and your spirit. I'm connected with them, they are connected with me. We don't have to meet once a month. We have to walk in righteousness. Amen. You understand the goal of the letters of Peter? If we don't read them, if we don't read them, if we don't study them, if we don't find the goal in them, we will be too easily distracted. And suddenly I am here, you are there, he's here, she's there. The parents are here, the children are there. Yeah. The pastor is here, the church is there. <laughs> so dispersion can be in many ways. Pastor Philip, I mean church every Sunday. Oh yeah, I have people like that too. They church every Sunday, but their heart is not fully. Yeah. In uh, are you with me? Yeah. Okay, let's take a break. What do we say? 15 minutes? Yeah. Context, what is his mind, what is in God's mind? Just two more letters. If it was that, if it was that, there is something you mean? We don't need more than Paul's letters, we have enough. For the next 200 years. But God has a special purpose in mind with these two letters. And, and the issue is do not deviate. Pursue destiny. Uh -huh. Why do you think Jesus took time to run after two disciples on the way to Emmaus? Because they were deviating. They had heard all the reports. Yeah. Okay. That's a short they had heard the report, Jesus died, and where is he, and what about the whole plan, and why didn't Jesus just let, let them go? No, because deviation is important. When God calls us, when God invests in us, when the Father gave His only Son for us, when God has worked on shaping us, in training us, in correcting us, in encouraging us, God will not let us deviate without helping us back to destiny. 
тэр бидний гажуудхыг зүгээр хараад сууж байна. So Jesus had to run after them. Тэр учраас Есүс бүр тэр хоёрыг очиод байж байна. He walked with them for a while. Тэгээд тэдэнтэй хамт алхсан байна. Was they were wrong? Тэгээд юу болсон юм бэ? This is him having not heard. Та нар сонсоог үгүй юу? What people are talking about? Хүмүүсээ ярьж байгаа сонсоог. What is happening in Jerusalem? Иерусалимд юу болсныг та сонсоог үгүй юу? Then he spoke with them. Тэгээд Есүс тэдэнтэй ярьсан юм. He spoke for Abraham and Moses and went through the whole thing. Абрахамаас эхлээд ярьсан Моосе гэдэг зүйл ярьсан. It's a whole package. Тэг бүр ингэ цогццуул ахгүй. That's what Peter said wrote here. Тийм учраас Петрийн битсэн баг. It has been spoken by the holy prophets. Ариун шилжүүлэгч нар ярьсан. Then by Jesus himself. Тэгээд Есүс ярьсан. And then by the apostles. Тэгээд нар ярьсан. And now through my two letters. Тэгээд би өөрийнхөө хоёр цагт. Do not deviate even you are dispersed. Танар тархсан ч гэсэн битгий гаж яваа. You are working in different workplaces in Ulan Bator. Don't be dispersed. Улан Батар янз бүрийн энэ тэнд ажиллаж байгаа ч гэсэн дэ битгий зүр сэтгэлээр тархмаг байгаа. Keep your heart united. Зүр сэтгэлээ нэгдмэл байгаа. Keep connecting with heaven. Мөнгөн устаа холбогдсон хэвээр. Keep worshiping him. Keep seeking his face. Сүүний магцсан хэвээр түүний нүрийг ирэхээсээ хэвээр байна. That's why he said to them. Тийм учраас тэр the whole history to show them this is not just Something which just happened. The end of the story is not just a dream. It's a whole journey to show the world that Jesus is the Creator. God has been in charge for centuries. God is orchestrating every detail. 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 Тэгээд алгасан. And they run back to the house. Үргөрөө бүтсэн нөгөө имаар өөр ярьж исэн хоёр хүн. This is the same Peter tries to do with these two leaders. Yes, Peter энэ хоёр цагтлыг бүтсэн баг. Peter is not worried. Peter санаа зовоогүй. I'm not worried for people. Би хүмүүсийн төлөө санаа зовоогүй. But there is a divine concern about deviation. Харин энэ гажуудлын талаар нэг тийм тэнгэрлэг зөвмөл байдаг. I've been at AGC three years, three or four years now. There's some people that've been there one year, next year they're not there. They're never there again. Uh-huh. Тэр нөгөө Лондон байдаг сургалтын дэнгээд хэд хэдэн жил очиж байгаа зарим хүмүүс ихний жил байсан хүмүүс дараа нь жил байх болч. Something has taken them. Something has deviated them. Ямар нэгэн зүйл тэднийг олцсон байгаа хэвээр. Даагүй байсан. Гажууд болсон. Can be friends, it can be culture, it can be social issues. Situations in their lives can be sadness. A lot of things. Маш олон зүйл. That's what Peter is writing here. Тийм учраас Петри энэ битсэн баг. All right? Let me take you to And then I will give you I, have, I think I have five or six keys. Main keys. Тав зурга гол төлхөрөл таарлдаг. Which Peter gives to them. Петр тэр төлхөрөлдөг нөгөө тарсан хүмүүс төрсөн. The purpose is зориг юу вэ? Let decline take place. Битгий одоо унал нуралтыг зөвшөөрөөч because if there is a decline in Cappadocia and in this place and this place then the kingdom will not progress it will regress хэрвээ патат пататаа өгт эсвэл энд тэнд унал явагдаж ирэх юм бол хаанчлал тэлэх биш харин хөмгдөж ирэх юм гэж аа so they were key people you are key people тийм учраас тэд нар төлхөр хүмүүс байсан шиг та бас төлхөр хүмүүс та нар I am a key person. If I blow it, if I miss it, if I deviate, whoa! Хэрвээ би бүхнийг баалж ярих бол хэрвээ би замаас гаж ирэх. It's not only me. Зөвхөн миний асуудал биш. Not only you. Зөвхөн таны асуудал биш. That's why God loved Abraham. Тэр учраас бурхан Абрахамыг хайрласан. Because God saw something in him. Яа, тэр түүний доктор байсан тэр зүрх сэтгэлийг аа. God saw in Abraham that Abraham thought of his children's and children's children. Абрахам өөрийнхөө хүүх тэдний хүүх тэдний өөр орд мэдлэ санаа зовдог байсан. So Abraham knew I cannot do whatever I want because there was a descendants. Тэр учраас Абрахам миний өөр удам гэж байгаа учраас би юу хүссэн дураараа дүргэж болохгүй гэсэн мэддэг байсан. That's why he became the friend of God. Тийм учраас тэр бурхны нөхөр гэсэн. Хамт нөхөр болж хайцсан. Let me show you one more thing before I give you key number one. За ихний төлхөрийг өгөөсөн нэг зүйл болсон. Second Peter chapter one. Хоёрдох Петрийн нөхөр гэсэн. To show you how important this is for Peter and for God. Петр тоолон бурхан гэнэ ямар чухал байсан юм бэ гэхийг харуулна. Verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power 
in coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Бид өөрсдийн эзэн Иесус Христийн хүч чадал болоод түүний эрх тухай та нарт мэдүүлэхдээ ухаалгаар зохиогдсон үлгэр домгуудыг дагаагүй харин бид түүний сүрж ахлан мөдөр бичлэгсэд юм аа. So be this be the Lord when we spoke to you бид нар та нарт ярихтаа It was not myth. Энэ бол үлгэр домог биш. It was not blah 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 blah. Би зүгээр чалчаа яриа биш. It was words from heaven. Энэ бол мөнхийн усаас ирсэн. That's what we gave you. Тийм үү тэр үгийг бид нар таанжд өгсөн. So we did speak myths. Тэр бид нар үлгэр домгийг яриагүй таанжд. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Харин бид нар түүний агуу байдлыг мөдөрийг ирчлээ. We had seen him. Бид түүнийг харсан гэж хэлж. Whatever happens. Юуч болсон байла. In Pontus and Galatia and Cappadocia and Bithynia. За тийм 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 бас. За тэр Гала, Каппадок, Битунд, Пантад юуч болсон байла. Whatever happens in those in those places. Тэгэхээр хотуудад юуч болсон байла. Whatever your professional situation is. Таны ажил мэрэгчлийн. Whatever your health is. Таны ажил мэрэгчлийн. Whatever your financial situation. Таны санхүүгийн нөхцөл байдал ямар ч байсан. Whatever culture you have to live in. Та ямар ч соёл дотор амьдарч байсан. We spoke we didn't speak myths to you. Бид нар танд үлгэр дом яриаг үшээ. We had seen his majesty. Бид түүний агуу сүрж ахлан үдээрээ харсан юм аа. Remember that. Тэр их санаарай. It was not some something we discovered or find out. Чи энэ бол бидний нээж илрүүлсэн нээлттэй танд. We had seen his majesty. Харин түүний сүрж ахлан би үдээрээ харсан юм аа. So whenever you you experience where you are Тэр та нар байгаа газраа юуч туулж байсан. There is a majesty in heaven. Мөнхөн улсын сүрч ахлан гэж байна. Even things go up and down. Юм сайжраад муужирч ирсэн. Peter said I've been through that too. Peter is in beach гэсэн тийм үн юмаар явсан. I was drowning in the lake when I would try to walk on the water. Тэр би нөгөө нэг усан дээр алхах гэж орлогч байгаа нуур жилж хөх шахсан. As I missed the whole point when Elijah and Moses came. Моса Илиша хоёр ирсэн бахад би бүр шал тэнэг юм ярьсан. I want to build tents. Би майхан байрын байна. How far can you be from heaven? Мөнхөн улсаас биш ирэхэд та хол цав тус. Oh, I wish I was just be having tent for you. Илиша моса хоёр майхан барьж ирэв юм. Oh my goodness, what 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 plan do you come from? Чи чи ямар гаргаж ирсэн. So Peter knew I've been outside the picture many times. Тэр хэрэг мэдчих шүү дээ. Тэр би олон удаа зургны гадна байсан. It can happen to you in Cappadocia and Bithynia in Asia. Битүүн Ад Каппадокт байга та нарт ч гэсэн. But you must remember one thing. Та нар ямар ч байсан. There is a majesty in heaven. Мөнхөн улсад сүрж авлаа гэж байна. And he pursues what he pursues. Тэр өөрийнхөө мөшөрж байгаа зүйлийг мөшөрж байгаа. Can go up and down. Your sand badge was more just some dreams come to pass some dreams don't come to pass. Зарим мөрөнд чи биелхэн зарим чи биелхгүй. Sometimes what we pray for happens sometimes it does not happen. Зарда бидний зайлбарл биеллээ олон зарда биелхгүй. But God is still in heaven. Гэхдээ бурхан мөнхийн улс байх. So don't deviate. Тэр учраас битгий гаж keep going. We have seen his majesty. Бид түүний сүрж ахлан нүдээрээ харсан. You can hear how How strong Peter is in this letter. Peter, ямар бичтэй бичсэн та харж байна уу? For when he received honor and glory from God the Father. Тэр шин үү? Сэрэн за гадгаршлаа. Түүнийг эцэг бурхнаас хүндэл ба алтрын хүлэн авах үед. And the voice was born and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Сүрж авлан алтраас энэ бол миний хайртай хүү түүнд миний таалал оршдог гэсэн дуу гараа. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven. Бид өөрсдөө мөнхөн улсаас гарсан энэ дуу хоолыг сонссон. For we were with him on the holy mountain. Бид түүнтэй ариун уулан дээр байх та. So Peter says this is extremely. Тэр бид хэлж ит энэ үнэхээр үнсэтэй true and relevant. Үнэхээр үнэн бөгөөд бид нар таамаг юм. In the different regions you can go through difficult times. Та нар янз энэ тэнх газруудад хүмүүс тоож ич болно. Энийг сайн. God is in heaven. Бурхан мөнхийн улсад байгаа. God is in heaven. Бурхан мөнхийн улсад. God is in charge. Бурхан бүхний хяналтанд. You must be geographically dispersed. Та газар зүйн байршлын хувьд тусгаарлагдсан байж болно. You can be on different levels. Бид нар янз бүрийн төвшөнд ажиллаж байгаа. But keep walking. Та алхсаар л байх. Because he is there. Яг тэгэхээр бурхан шинт. And we we heard him. Бид түүнийг сонссон. Verse 19. And we have something more sure. 
the prophetic word. So he said, we saw him on the mountain. We heard the voice audibly. We saw Moses and Elijah with our eyes. Today you cannot do that. But we have something even more sure than that. And that's, that's the prophetic word. When you hear from heaven, through a message, through the message Sunday morning, or through the seminar, that word is more powerful than seeing Elijah in Moses. This is your favorite word. That's why the whole church must become have a prophetic ear. Not just listen and listen and listen. A young man said to me recently, Pastor Philip, I cannot hear anymore. I heard too much. That's the basic understanding. Because it's not about listening and listening. And remembering. This is not school. This is hearing with your heart. Not with your brain. With your heart. And catch something. I will catch something. In every message, you must catch something. One word or one sentence, but catch something. Because that one thing is better than seeing Moses and Elijah. Or the angel Gabriel and Michael. I've never seen an angel. Some people have. You know, after a couple of years, they're out of the picture. These young people don't have them very much. But when God is in a place, and God speaks and works, and you catch it, and you take it, that's more than an angel. I say, that's more than an angel. That's more than an angel. So don't ask God, God, show me angels. Why? For what purpose? If you hear his voice, you will run with him. The angels do the same. They hear his voice. And they send on assignments. We don't know much about the angel, but we know that much. So they say, we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention. Every Sunday morning, pay attention. Every day when you have a time with him, don't talk, 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 talk. Talk for a while and then keep silent. And then keep talking. Because if you catch something, what you catch is more powerful than you think. So be, be the same to them. Amen. Be the same to them. All of you saw this first. Feeling isolated, feeling alone. You don't have many Christian friends. Hey, don't resign. Don't ask for Moses and Elijah. Don't ask for angelic visitation. Catch something with your heart. Pay attention to what he says. Uh -huh. Then he said. Pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. That's an important one. So listen carefully. Peter said, if you catch some of this light, catch something coming from him, you pay attention to it. And you 
Keep it in your heart, like Mary did. She kept it in, in her heart. She had many questions. How can I be pregnant with the Holy Spirit? I mean, what on earth is going on? And the baby will save the whole world. My goodness, what is Am I in my full mind, or should I need some? Psychiatric supervision. <laughs> but she, she heard something. She kept it in her heart. And she spoke with Elizabeth. Both women had caught something. Mary caught something about Jesus. Elizabeth caught something about John. And they, they stayed together for a while. With me, that's why we need destiny friends. Good people, companions, and we come back to that. Where we can talk about what we carry without explanations. No, if Elizabeth asked, how did you get pregnant? <laughs> Me, it was Zacharias, but you? <laughs> he was an old man, I know, but he came the, the right way. But what about you? No explanation. Elizabeth called it immediately. She knew. This pregnancy, oh my. Now something is happening here on the earth. Mary sent to sing. Because what was in Elizabeth's womb was the forerunner of what was in her own womb. Things were connected together. What I carry and what you carry are connected together. That's why we must not deviate. Anybody? Otherwise, everybody is harmed. Mary should not say. Oh, my pregnancy is supernatural. You, Zechariah, me, God. Then everything was lost. Because human flesh came into the picture. Both knew this is important. So Peter said, what we have, even is small, it can be as small as the morning star on a dark sky. That morning star is the signal that the dawn is coming. God spoke to me about that recently. And then he said something I have never thought about. He said this. If you don't carry the morning star through midnight, you will not see the dawn. Take a breath. <laughs> I had to take a breath. <laughs> so there will be some midnights in our lives. And before we get there, we have to carry something. Otherwise, we will not cross the midnight moment. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why Jesus ran after the two disciples on the way to Emmaus, because they were coming to a midnight. Things were dying for them. Their hope was dying. Their dreams were dying. Everything was connected to Jesus, but he disappeared. So they had come to midnight. So Jesus had to speak again about the prophets. And raise that thing inside of them, the morning star again, to help them cross the midnight moment. Because if we don't cross that midnight, we will not reach the dawn. 
I have run away from midnight many times. Because I had no fathers. There was no strong house I could connect with. So I came to midnight, I went to Emmaus. I had many Emmaus in my life. <laughs> but finally, I came, I understood this. I have to go to that moment. But before I go through that moment, I have to carry something inside of me. Because if I don't do that, midnight will shut me down. It can be financial midnight, it can be educational midnight, it can be health midnight, it can be a Family problem midnight. Can be all kinds of midnights. But we have to go through them. Don't pray this prayer. God, take my midnight away from me. Because if you pray that, you are saying, I will never wish to go. What you have to pray is this. God, put a prophetic word in my heart. Let me hear your voice. Help me to catch something. I'm listening to the pastor Sunday after Sunday. But I catch nothing. God, help me. Catch something. Which can become a morning star. When that happens, you can survive midnight. Not because of your strength, but because of the strength of the prophetic word. You might die to flesh. But the light will stay alive. You might not be able to cross over. But the prophetic word will, try to, will carry you over. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's how Israel through, went through the wilderness. They could have died millions of times. But there was a prophetic word in the which has been spoken from generation to generation since the days of Abraham in I have given you this territory. I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob. You will have that path. That word was the morning star inside of them. But so many times, they deviated, turned to the right, turned to the left. No water. Oh, water, but it's bitter. No food, God sent meat. All the time. But God finally carried them. To them. Why? Why did they? How did they enter the promise? Remember what Caleb said. He said, Joshua, do you remember what God said to me through Moses? That was Caleb's morning star. And I'm sure Caleb has died, had died many times to the witness. He buried his grandparents, he buried his parents, maybe. They buried a lot of people in the sand. Maybe many times he thought, how can we do this? And he had caught something inside of him. That's what took him to the prison. Peter knows that. Why? 
because he had been walking with Jesus for three years. And Peter died many times. And Jesus helped him die. Jesus told him to go to the hospital. He went publicly. But you know what? There was something in Sarah Peter. Peter and Dr. Young Bessima. Could not let go. He could not let go. Jesus asked him, Peter, do you love me? Yes. Three times. Which means something was still alive. Otherwise, he had said, well, I really don't know anymore. I really, I really love you. Then Jesus knew. The morning, the morning star is still there. He will cross his midnight moment. Amen. Amen. This is what Peter is addressing. Because he knew more than anybody else that if you cross the midnight moment, the new day is there. At Pentecost in Jerusalem, just spoke few words, thousands of people came in. Whoa. But we are afraid of midnight. We are afraid of dying to self. Or we have not just heard enough. I pray that there is such a hunger in your heart. God, I want to catch something. I want to catch something. I cannot be a member of this church for two, three, four, five more years without catching anything. Okay. As I tell you, if you have that hunger so strong in your heart, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. One day. <laughs> Whoa. I've seen people like that. I've seen people in church for years with a stone face, touching nothing. You can, you can pull water on them. Just Look at the face, not even wet. But suddenly, things become, begin to change. Begin to catch something. In the beginning, they don't know what they're catching. But they know that something is happening. They can feel a stirring in their heart. Hunger comes, desire comes. You become curious. Pastor, what does that mean? I thought about that in the last four weeks. When I hear people say things like that, I know God is at work. Sometimes you can take you can talk for four years. They have not thought about anything. They are not thinking 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 about anything. You said last Sunday, what do you mean by that? Sit down, we'll talk. This is what I mean. Ah, ah. Thank you. I will think about that. Go home and think. When you have that attitude, God sees that attitude. He will give more. He starts start in the small measure. I even remember people in here in this church. I will not mention names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it, is, it was like that for me too. I mean, I'm even born on church floor almost. <laughs> I went to church for 15 years in my father's church. Nothing happened. I knew all his messages, <laughs> all his jokes. <laughs> Everybody laughed. Ha, ha, ha. I, laugh. I knew them. I could sense them coming. I said, ah, now these jokes are coming. I knew everything. Nothing happened. Until one day, 
My father commanded us because that's my father's name. Sunday afternoon, there is a youth conference in that church. You go there. My father was not the kind of person you say no to. <laughs> so, my brother and I, we went there. We knew the place. And when I went in, I thought, oh my, what kind of church is this? What, trumpets and tubas and trombones and <laughs> full orchestra and there were like, know, 50 people on the platform with dresses and there was a balcony we were sitting in the back up to the back wall as far as possible <laughs> do you know what? I don't, even, I don't remember one word he said but in that meeting, something happened in my heart. That was the last place I thought something would happen. Even my father's church was more interesting for me. But something happened. God touched my heart. I heard nothing, I understood nothing. But I what was that? Then it was dormant for some years. And then, then God reactivated. Then I went through midnight in my life. And that reactivated again. But I was carrying something in my heart since that bassoon meeting. Trombone, tuba, trumpet meeting. The morning star can carry you through midnight. And it has to. I said that to somebody yesterday. On the Skype talk, I had with somebody. I said, you have to go through that midnight. I cannot go for you. What will help you go, make you go, is what you carry inside of you. Don't resign, don't run away. Cry for half a minute if you want, it's okay. But keep that night alive. This is what people say. Are you listening to me? Uh -huh. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Verse uh, 19, like the end of verse 19. So, <coughs> Amen. Okay, so that's a bit of the frame for my messages this weekend, this week. Do you, are you understanding how important these letters are? Because I have found out that if the devil cannot stop you or me, he will try to deviate us. Because I have found out that so don't think, hmm, I'm unstoppable. Okay. Are you undeviatable? That's why I have so much respect for Peter. So Paul, okay. Peter is a great man. Went through all these midnights. And he kept going. He kept going. Even it did not stop because Peter was Peter. He, he didn't become a saint at Pentecost. Few months later, God spoke to him. And Peter's answer was no. Now we have Peter there again. <laughs> Kill and eat. 
birds, snakes, it's forbidden by the law. God said, kill and eat. No! Kill and eat. And then disappear. But you know what? If he had deviated there, you and I will not be here today. Because that's the first time the gospel entered the hidden world, the non-Jewish world. Yeah, salute people. Because he continued and continued. There was even a moment where Paul corrected him publicly. He, he could have said, Okay, Paul. Let's meet after the meeting in the street. <laughs> we'll, fix the, we'll fix the problem. Okay. You know what? Peter, he took it. An amazing man. And now he writes to all the Christians. Don't fear midnight. Keep the prophetic word. I mean, some of you, you know that already. Because what is inside of you has carried you so far. I'm sure you had your tears, you had your depressions. I had my tears, I had my depressions. Oh! Do you have your depression? <laughs> yeah. I'm not an angel, I'm not Elijah. <laughs> By the way, Elijah was quite depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but God came again. He said to me, Why are you hiding in that cave? Come out. And then God said to him, I have 7,000 more. You cannot be here. You are a foreigner. Die to yourself now. And stand up. There are 7,000 who have not bowed their knees for Baal. There is Hassel coming after you. There is Jehu coming after you. There is Elisha coming after you. Don't deviate. Don't deviate. Die and resurrect all the dead. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Yes. You know? So Elijah was depressed. <laughs> he, was su- he was suicidal. <laughs> As you know, my testimony, I've been there too. Somehow, by God's grace, <laughs> come back to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was in the midnight. It was midnight. Actually, it was midnight. <laughs> it was dark outside and inside. You know what? <laughs> Prophetic word, even if small, can motivate you. Push it forward. Yeah, it's midnight. Yeah, but it's midnight. Yes, but there is a morning star. The morning star speaks about a new day. Keep going. That's how I live. Pastors wrote, wrote to me this morning. Wrote, wrote to me. Pastor Philip, how can you keep going like this? Pastor Philip, that's what keeps me going. I've not seen angels. I'm not on the mountain seeing His Majesty. I've not seen Elijah or Moses. I've seen Jonathan and David. <laughs> <laughs> but there is something inside of me which keeps me going. So trust the morning star. Trust what God has put in your heart, what God has put in the house. Be careful of deviation. And now we think, why should the young generation go through everything we went through? 
яагаад бидний залуу үе бидний туусан бүхнээр тулах хэрэгтэй гэж. I'm not saying they will not have their challenges. They will have their challenges. Тэд тэр өөрсдөө тулах хэрэгтэй юмыг туусна. Өөрсдөд нь өөр их гэсэн сонирхолтой дээр. And I believe their challenges will be heavier than our challenges. Тэдний өмнө тулгарах сонирхолтой дээр бидний одоо тулгарч байгаас ч хэцүү байх гэж би боддог. хүндэл гэж би бас so i'm still working for young generation тийм учраас just be одоо хүртэл залуу үе хэвчлээ ажиллаж байна we why should they go through the same our challenges and then their challenges хар тэд яагаад өөрийнхөө сорилтыг туулахын зэрэгцээ миний сорилт бидний сорилтыг туулах хэвчтэй гэж аа бидний асуудлаар туулах хэвчтэй гэж i've been struggling a bit with let me share this with you it's more food note now the youth conference is coming quite quickly in august man sir galochudin conference also i've been thinking a lot you know mm-hmm. and from time to time we say or i say the gender being the age makes no difference it's not about age there is no age in the kingdom nas hanchtal batar yamar nigm odo yalha urga arakhgoi gech hilt that's right that's it i'm 70 i've been you know, not after the jet lag but so i'm i still young and fresh and alert. Тэгсэн ч гэсэн дээ би сонор сэрэмжтэй залуу сэрэхгүй байна. It's absolutely right to say it's not about age. Тэр энэ бол нас ерөөсөө хамаагүй гэж хэлэх нь зөв. At the same time. Гэхдээ нөгөө талаас there is something about the young generation. Залуу үеийнхэн гэсэн нэг онцгой нэг тийм юм бас байна. For years these two things have been like contradicting each other. Тэгэхээр хэдэн жил олон жилийн турш энэ хоёр ойлголт нэг нэгнийхээ одоо эсрэг үгүйсгэсэн мэт байсан. Thousands of them. Тэгээ би бодлоос how do you see that? Олон удаа асуусан бүр. Because in one way удаа та энийг яаж харах? Age makes no difference. Нэг талаас харахад нас ямар ч асуудал биш ямар ч одоо ялгаа гэдэг. Young people who will not be able doing what I'm doing. Тэр залуу хүмүүс миний хийж байгаа хийж чадна. At the same time there is this thing going on in God's heart for the young generation. Гэхдээ нөгөө талаас бурхны зүр сэтгэл залуу үед таарсан нэг онцгой байдаг. How to reconcile these two? Энэ хоёр зүйл яаж хоорондоо ингэж эвлэлдэх хэрэгтэй байх вэ? So North Pole South Pole. Энэ чинь одоо ингэ өмнө төл хойд төл шүү дээ. Энэ хоёр яаж ингэж хоорондоо нийцэх хэрэгтэй юм бэ? The reason he got answered. Саяхан бурхан надад хариусан байна. And he said both are right. Хоёулаа зөв гэж хэлсэн. So there is age has no the kingdom is ageless. Хаанчлал бол насгүй. Хаанчлал насны яагаад гэхдээ I want you to help me to raise the next generation. Гэхдээ би чамаа залуу үеийг босгож ирээсэй. Because I have something for them. Яагаад тэр тэдэнд зориулсан нэг онцгой юм надад байна. You give me two passages. Тэгээд тэр надад хоёр зүйл хэлсэн байна. I mention one of them for you. Таарч нэг нь хэлээ. It is Psalm 144. Дуулалцоо <laughs> залуу эмхтэй will be like carved pillars залуу эмхтэй ч үд хааны ордонд дотор сэлсэн багын үед байх болно so the young women will be person which have been carved by god нар дуудагцсан сэлбэрлэгцсэн we move certain things ингээл урсан God's house, young women will be like carved pillars. There is one translation where it says even they will be carved corner pillars. Өөр нэг орчуулгын дээр юу гэдэг вэ? Эдний өргөө залуу эмхтэй ч бүр залуу эмхтэй ч бурхнаар урлагдсан тулгуур баган байх болно гэж хэлсэн. Which means important pillars. маш чухал баг баг And then David continues. Тэгээ Давид ингэж өргөлчлөөс. And he wrote and the young men will be like grown up plants. Залуу үе залуу эр нь өргөн дотор ургаж би ургана шиг байх болно гэсэн. Боловсрсан ургана шиг байх болно гэж хэлсэн. And that was such an answer for me. 
That we are all living stones. But God has something specific for the young generation. Young women will become pillars. I thought for years that young men will be the young people. <laughs> Actually, when I was in Romania one month ago, a young man came to me and said, Why are young men not the pillars in the country? <laughs> I said to him, Don't bother. Become a grown up plant. Focus on your mission. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he needed that. Become a grown up plants. You understand? We are all living stones in the house. But God has something specific. The second passage, passage I don't remember where it is. But it came to me recently that in the story where God spoke to Elijah and said to him, don't, don't kill yourself, okay? That's my version. Because there are 7,000 others who are ready. That's, that's all the living stones in the house. No mention of age. The characteristic is they have not bowed their knees for God. They can be 18 or 18. They have not bowed their knees. Okay. Then say, I have 7,000. They said, I have Hazel, will be king. They said, I have Jehu. And I have Elisha. <coughs> This is your next generation. So don't kill yourself. I don't want you to come home, stay where you are. More, more will happen, I have more people. You are not alone. Okay. A little bit later, there is a war. Maybe I will come back to that later. Next time I'm here. Then there is a war. And the king asked God, God, who should go to war? And God said to him, You must go to war. And you have to take with you. If I remember right, it's 232 of the young, your young leaders. When I saw that, it was so powerful. Because God said to me, don't go, don't go to war alone. Are you with me? There will be others. There are seven thousand. There are a lot of people. Young people, old people, men, women. Seven thousand living stones. People walking with me. Strong people, are you with me? So you're not alone. Sometimes we feel alone. We are not alone. God has people everywhere. Maybe we don't know them, but they might know us. We don't know everybody listening to the internet radio. But God knows them. There are Mongolians all over the world maybe listening to the internet. Taking notes. And catching something, having a morning star rising inside their hearts. One day you will find out who is who and where they live. And you will find out they have not bowed their knees to bow. They are a hidden army. Ready to write, ready to step up, ready to take responsibility, ready to represent heaven in their workplaces. No difference of age. 7,000. Then he had, he had a king, he had a prophet, and then he had this 232. Young leaders. Then I knew. 
God has something for the engineer. Because otherwise, he could have said, take the 7,000 and let the king move forward and fight together. But I say, no, I have some young leaders I want to be part of that. Take them with you. When I saw that, I knew. In my office, I have a, not a blackboard, it's a green board, <laughs> all style. <laughs> and I have written that verse <laughs> on my board. Remember 232 young people, young leaders. I can find the verse for you for tomorrow. 200 something. Then I knew. Then, it's 2nd King 20. No, no, first, first you first King. 20. Let's go there. First, first King, yes. 20. 20. Let me show you that to you. 20. Then I was ready for FGC. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. 232. I have a good memory still. 70 years old memory. <laughs> Okay, do you have it? First King, verse chapter 20, verse 13. I don't know why I mentioned that to you, but maybe it's important. It might become a morning star in your heart. It should take you through some midnight moments. And behold, the prophet came here to Ahab, king of Israel, and said, Thus says the Lord, Have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I'm sorry. Behold, I will give it, I will give it into your hand this day, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Yeah, and I have said, by whom? Thus says the Lord, by the servants of the governors of the districts. In another translation, I don't know how it is in Mongolian. Uh -huh. Another translation is the servant of the princes, meaning the young leaders in the nation. Uh -huh. oh. Oh. Servant of the princes. The servants of the princes. Uh -huh. The ha young servants of the princes. Interesting verse. Young servants. So they were young people, men and women. The princes in the nation. And God said, for them. Then I have said, who shall begin the battle? And he answered, you. <laughs> Don't hide behind the young people. You. <coughs> then he mustered the servants of the governors of the districts, and they were 232. And after them, he must have all the people of Israel 7,000. So in this specific situation, something phenomenal, so inspiring happened. The king is the key person, of course. But then there is a whole company of people, 7,000 quality people. The king cannot do it alone, the 7,000 cannot do it alone. Yeah, okay. But then there are 232. And that is so inspiring. Then I decided I will go to a GC the next five years. Because this picture has become so, it's like burning in my heart. God had some kings 
I will not explain all that. God had some kings. He had some prophets. He had a whole company of people. That's why we should not overemphasize the role of leaders. I said to my church recently, let's remove that word from our vocabulary. Because here the picture is the king, yes, the prophets, yes. So leadership, the prophetic. Seven thousand people. No more believers. Strong believers. How do I know they were strong? They had not bowed their knees for God. They had not deviated. They were like Daniel, not bowed for the statue. Even if it was at the cost of their lives, they would not bow for God. So God had unknown people, good people, living stones in the house. So it's not about only leaders. We need some, we need some examples, some models. But I don't like the word leaders anymore. And I will remove it from my church. By the way, for another example, what should be you should should you be a leader? So I want example, I told my leaders. After, after summer, we are not leaders anymore. You have to be an example. You have to be a model for the next generation. Not only young people, but for everybody. Are you with me? That's why God said, the kings, the prophets, and 7,000. Without the 7,000, the king is a dead king. And the prophet is a dead prophet. And then God says, By the way, I have an extra company of people. Some young leaders. Watch them. Why involve them? Because one day the king will die, the prophets will die. So we have to take the next generation with us. So next year I will bring some young people with me. Not because, oh, wonderful. It's not about one. It's serious. That's the way God operates. Are you with me? I had some people with me to Romania in December. Six young leaders with me. What a weekend. It was, it was extremely good for them. It was extremely good for me. It was extremely good for the church. I will do that in the future. Maybe you will take some Mongolians with me to Sri Lanka or Brazil. Denmark. Why? Because that's, that's the picture God is giving. Look at this. That's why Peter is so. You are dispersed, but don't go down. You are dispersed, but protect the morning star because there are midnights. Amen. That's the concern of Peter. Let me give you the first key. I will not. I will stop here. Let me give you the first key. The first key is determination. I think I will give you five keys from the Because Peter is a 
Great men. Ja, die ist Petru und Kerago, wo wir sie machen. Small letters, but we're great men. Ich habe schon gesagt, bis zum nächsten Mal, wo sie bis zum nächsten Mal. It's not about big letters, not about big churches, it's about great churches. Peter ist auch so, und Thompson hier, wo Tom sich gerade hier, wo Peter ist auch so richtig. Peter ist schon ein great man. Peter ist ungefähr ja, das ist schon auch nicht gewesen. So the first key he gave them. Für Peter ist hier Thompson, ist das nicht so richtig? Nicht so viel. Not be diverted. Determination. <laughs> 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Therefore, I will come back to what that means tomorrow. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be sober-minded. Set your hope fully on the grace. All three Issues have to do with determination. He said, be prepared or prepare yourself. To prepare myself. Amen. Number two, be sober minded. Which means not be caught by emotions. Ooh, fantastic. Yeah. Then, then next week, oh, so bad. And then fantastic. And then terrible. And then phenomenal. And then awful. That's not a sober minded person. Even great things happen. You know what? Great things can divert you. I want to see what kind of a job does that special. What you study? One person came to me recently because we had a funeral for a man who was too young to die. The thing that that's why I'm not sure if you need a short term benefit means that you're not there just now. So we had to talk about healing again. The better to get into things that are hard to solve. And but then I said to the person, the better to do so. Let me. Let me give you an illustration. Let's say we have healings every Sunday. Let's say the parking outside the church is full of ambulances who go to sick people from the hospital. Because they know that people are getting healed. Even dead people from the mall. <laughs> from the fridge. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it has happened. If you read revival history, it has happened. I see a picture of a revival tent with dozens of ambulances. And they went, they went away empty. That's not a problem for God. The issue is, what will that do to us? Can we still be focused? Or will that divert us? And then we are on the front page of the newspaper, and then we upload pictures on Facebook, 200 videos. And I just saw how it gets like Facebook, and it's too hard to get no one. It's too hard to run there, guys. Or can we let that happen? Let the signs and wonders follow us. We don't follow them, they follow us. Which means 
we set the course and the sending one is full of us. Bibel дээр энэ чиглэлтэй юу гэж хэлсэн бэ хэ? Та нар явах хэвээр зам дээр анхаар гайхамшиг тэмдгүүд таарна. If we follow the signs and wonders, it will divert us. Харин бид нар гайхамшиг тэмдгүүдийг дагаад эхлүүлэх гай замаас хаач явах гэсэн. So I'm saying we need signs and wonders. We don't want people to die too early. We don't want to see miracles in, in the house. But beyond that, we want to stay on course. Then I give a second example. I say, what if? What if? One Sunday we have ten healings. Нэг бүтэсэн бид нар 10 хүн манас өндөр идэрхэн сик 10 хилс 10 өвчтэй 10 идэрсэн Following Sunday дараагийн 7 5 сик 6 people 5 хилс 5 өвчтэй хүн байлаа 5 идэрсэн Following Sunday дараагийн 7 26 people 20 хилс 26 хүнээс 20 идэрсэн Then the fourth Sunday Дөрөвд 7 хилс 15 сик people 15 өвчтэй хүн 2 хилс 2 идэрсэн гэлээ Only two what will happen to you? Will you think? <laughs> God? Where are you? I mean, God is always there. But because of that, negative thoughts. God, what is wrong with me? What's wrong with me? It's with me. It's wrong with Pastor Philip. 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 Pastor Maybe I should consider going to another church because here things are going down. If that happens, then we can be diverted into the church. Are you with me? That's why that's what this is what Peter has in mind. Don't die, don't die. Stick on it. I know you are there in Cappadocia, you are there in Asia, you are there in Italy. But please, prepare yourself for action. Be sober minded. Trust fully. Set your, what how is it? Set your, set your hope. Set your hope fully on the grace. All that can be put together in one word. Sunday <laughs> Don't tell God what to do. Tell yourself what to do. I will be focused. I will be determined. I will be patient. I will give my whole heart, my whole life. Be focused. 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 Be Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. We thank you for Peter. Such a great man. Many ups and downs. 
тэр үнэхээр сайн муу цангууд үнэндээ тэр өөртөө уран хуулч байсан. Есүс магадгүй түүнд уран хуулч expresses love three times. Тони дараага гурван удаа танд өөрийнхөө Jesus I love you. Jesus I love you. And I love you. Oh God. Thank you for Peter. Thank you for such a forerunner. Бидний өмнөх үеийн түүний төлөө татдаг. For the make us forerunners. Та бидний өнөхөр урд make me a forerunner. Make me a forerunner. Тэгэхээр when we are sad or we are confused or we are disappointed or we are wounded there will still be a morning star shining in our hearts and talking to us and saying to us keep walking keep moving keep growing keep connecting keep worshiping keep raising your voice keep raising your hands hallelujah we pray for four in the churches let the city church become more and more four in the church Foreigners, so others can pick up the example. Not copy the city church. Not just reproduce it. But they hold of the patterns, they hold of the dynamics. And become a foreigner themselves. So in this wonderful nation, there will be more foreigner churches. Walking together, walking together, running together, connecting together with different graces, with different graces. Peter had a grace. Paul had another grace. But Peter is quoting Paul. And Paul is quoting Peter. Because they work together. For the let it happen in our, in our nation. In the name of Jesus. So I declare. There will be no decline. There will be no diversion. There will be no disconnection. Oh Father in Jesus name. You instruct our lives. You teach us. You, you shape us. So we become stable. We become sober. We become prepared for action. And we set our hope fully on your grace. In the wonderful name of Jesus. So thank God for Peter's two letters. We will not go down. We will not go down. We will go up. Even, even if we are dispersed. In, some in Korea, some in China, some in Switzerland, some in America, some here and some there, we will still work together. Because heart is connected to heart. Thank you for leaders, good leaders, good examples. Thank you for mothers and fathers. Thank you for prophetic people. Thank you for the 7,000 who have not bowed their knees for bow. Strong believers. Men and women. All ages. All ages. 7,000 of them. Many of them. 
Call them out of their hidden situation. So we meet them, we identify them. We talk with them face to face. And we are like Mary and Elizabeth. There was a connection. There was a resonance. There was a response in our hearts. And we find out there are more people with us than against us. Even in this nation, city church will discover people many places who are walking with God. Like Nicodemus, like Joseph Arimathea. And suddenly you will bring people together. Not in the same place. In different places, but connected together. And we pray also for the young generation, for the 232, who will raise with maturity young women like carved corner pillars in the house. And young men as grown up plants in the house. Strong, stable, bearing fruits, being good fathers for the next generation. Thank you, Father, for Peter's letters. We feel so encouraged, so stirred in our spirits. Even we are dispersed. Even we can feel alone from time to time. Even we can feel isolated from time to time. In our nations. Or in our workplaces. But we are together. Hallelujah. And you are our leader. There is only one leader. And that's you. You are the head of the church. There is no other head of the church. You are the head. And you raise fathers and mothers, examples. And, and, and good examples, mature examples. Grown up in the spirit. Stable, unshakable. Solid people. Undivertible people. Oh, raise many of them. Raise many of them. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Speak to us these days. Help us to lay hold of something prophetic these days. So, so everybody in this place will say, Whoa, that was for me. That was the word I needed to hear. That's the thought I need to think and remember. That's the step I have to take. That's the direction I have to, to align with. Help us to lay hold of things. Because that will protect us in the midnight hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.